Welcome back to a special edition of your view coming to you on the sidelines of the Africa Governance Report launched out in Kenya in Nairobi. As we round off the conversation now, women issues in the report, give it to me. I'm sh- surely there isn't, at least in my recollection of reading the report, uh, a specific women focused recommendation that says this is what we need to do to, 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 to sort of bring back the frontiers on the whole issue of, of, of gender and oppression of women, etc. Uh, your view? Uh, it's a, a very unfortunate, really, that gender did not come off as, as strongly as it should have in the report. I think what I can recall is that it was lumped up in a table where it looks at frameworks pertaining to women, mm-hmm. how many member states of the African Union have ratified, and uh, obviously... Um, how many have not? Mm. But in terms of just really mainstreaming it across all these uh, all these thematic areas and giving concrete recommendations yeah. from a gendered perspective, yeah. that was very that was quite missing. But I can even say that overall in the APRM process, yeah, gender has been identified as an issue that needs uh, attention. But what is lacking is sort of like the gendered analysis of the questionnaire of of yeah. the reporting so we're dealing with a, a a bigger problem here but i know that there have been active uh, active steps to actually remedy that situation i mean just uh, two weeks ago we were in kigali where we mm. were discussing gender peace and security mm-hmm. and uh, we are actually discussing how we can actually genderize some of the aprm instruments so i think this is a um it's a, a work st- in progress it's a start but for this particular conference yeah. where we're looking at implementation etc i think it was a bit absent but we're not if, but even the, in the in the articulation but jj of how here you take is not one. where we discuss implementation i think that's something that we need to quite nuance quite clearly the person who the, the people who implement when it comes to the aprm are member states and there were no member states in the room because I think the conversation was for was other acts. We've had the other conversation members. Yes. So when it comes to implementation, I think we need to be careful because we need to remember who implements, and yeah. we also need to remember what the mandate of the APRM is. They're not implementers; they are. They convene. They bring people together. No, but the dialogue was meant to analyze what needs to be done. Not that the, the, the people are going to do it were in their room. Yeah, but, but, but I mean, but, if you look, but surely if you have brought academics, policymakers, media. NGOs into a room. You can't expect. So you're asking me what they should have said should yes. have been done, or because when you say about implementation, was, then you're confusing. Was, I'm saying it was absent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, in, in the in the panels, in the discussions, I mean, you hardly had. There was maybe one or two people who mentioned gender-based violence the entire two days. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, when she um, Luanda mentioned it about uh, the conference happening in Kigali, yeah, and uh, what happened in here is like uh, it's like the it's like a process. Now okay. we we had this. Uh, you, you mentioned the different uh, uh, profiles in the room. It's like yeah. from each one's angle, what yes. should be done. Yes. Right. And then yeah. from uh, the our point of view, like from uh, uh, the the continental level of a youth network until the the, the lowest community level, what yeah. what is supposed to be done? And the academic. Uh, the academics they, they've been telling about the contain and how they think and the, the, the friend from yeah. Congo mentioned it, Julius mentioned it like we no, don't talk about to, depth. Come right? to gender issues. Are, are you saying that you are satisfied no, that it, it was on the table enough of as not. an issue? But for me, but for me, JJ, I, yeah. I don't see the merit of, I, I understand for your purpose, you have to lament on what happened here now, but I think there's a bigger process here that we, we need to discuss, and I think yeah. we can't have that conversation outside of understanding the mandate, understanding the process, yeah. understand but when I'm saying, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on, when I say yeah. genderizing the tools and the yeah. processes. It means that then we are cementing the gender yeah, issue so that, it's not just, so, so, so that it's not popping yeah. off in just one conversation and yeah. left off in another when you are not around. Yeah. So we are speaking about actually having it cemented in all the processes so in, every, in any and every meeting of the APRM that you attend, gender is covered. So that's what I'm driving to, to say yeah. that if we are saying we want things to be genderized and we want things to be, you know, really entrenched in the processes, yeah. then it means that in every meeting we'll cover it. We'll actually have a way of tracking and yeah. measuring, measuring what member states are doing and then documenting. We've covered that the HR report was, it had its shortcomings sure. and we've made recommendations going forward. Yeah. But I think also there's merit in actually speaking about the process holistically rather than cherry picking what works for the discussion now. Yeah, I'm not sure how what 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 the cherry picking comes in because you you've called a meeting here, yeah. bringing a, a range of people around the table, mm. academics, mm. right? Mm. They didn't say anything about gender, yeah. <coughs> media, mm. nothing. They could say lots of things about how you are media. What did you say about gender? Yeah, I, I said lots of things, but <laughs> you, know, you understand. Uh, 
what what else you know ngos etc there may be women groups etc so i i, I mean I, I don't understand why it sounds like you are saying this forum is not so important as to no, deal no, no. with gender I think, issues I, i think it's because uh offering the interventions that i'm giving you and what yeah. you are asking i think from what i'm giving you you just choose to discuss the you know the, this particular but i'm yeah. i'm saying there's a bigger process that is important here to understand yeah. you know what i'm saying so it's 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 okay to discuss this one in in, in no, isolation sure. we are assessing well, the, the, we are. the reason it's called consolidated launch is because we are assessing it's a big report that is the song and dance about it in the continent in fact the, uh, other people may even say it may even make Uh, you know some of the leaders to relax to say oh you know we've we'll, we'll been given a, a, yeah. a clean bill of health when there was no <laughs> one sentence that said to me there is a recognition that the issue of gender is a crisis in this continent right and therefore whether you are media or you are ngo and so on you got to be able to articulate what needs to be done because i assume that the recommendation coming out of here have to go somewhere have to feed into the next report etc yeah, yeah. etc yeah. you understand yeah. yeah. where, where, where i'm coming from yeah. therefore I'm I'm saying what do we, what are we going to do what should be done same question that we asked about the youth do you think there must be a special focus on this genderization in the next report right that can be linked to governance because some people will say oh it's not relevant it's actually very relevant you are being governed by men old men who are retiring right uh, you have one or two women president in the last yeah. two decades yeah going forward you actually have nobody it's all men right mm -hmm. Uh, just just to to, to 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 scratch on the surface i hear you and i think maybe you may have missed my intervention during the discussions earlier because i actually yeah. did raise that there's only a couple of best practices that we can yeah. actually cite from the continent yes. and then what i you had said that three, yeah. yeah i hope that you know from what we can learn from these that the, the next report will actually then take these scenarios yes. to actually drill down to understand how are these impacting women in the ground because we're not speaking about women in the rural area that are not able to be in these space and articulate themselves in the way that we are but how do these political representation and all these nice quotas that they have translating to really really just gender empowerment in the ground in the rural areas yeah. and i did put that to them and i'm hope that recommendation will be taken forward but it, it, the conversation is there yeah and and definitely like having you yes. uh, individually in the uh, in the in the room yeah. during this day this day is like uh, from your own experience and uh, yeah. what you've seen and what you said in the room i was i was there right yeah. so what you said could be even a, a way of thinking for the next uh, the next sure, quarter sure, right sure. so for me this is uh what we should take it from here like what what has been uh, what have been done before we get here yeah. as she mentioned about the conference about women yeah peace and security so specific, specific women specific, conference you know, yeah and also the representation of uh, youth in the room from different part and the, uh -huh. the speakers i'm as a as a youth coordinator i'm i'm really yeah not just happy for the the, the number the, the yeah. numbers of youth but the representation also in gender in terms of yeah. the representing the, not just participants but also speakers are you happy with the conclusion that you know from a socio economic point of view okay. the state of governance is so improved uh, you know that it would in fact uh, deal uh, adequately with issues of gender and, and and youth or is that not the sentiment that your constituencies share I would not say uh so happy because when you compare what we have or what we're doing to other places in the world you will say we're not we're not doing nothing right but when yeah. you take from where we come from and where we want to go you will say there is a, a huge things done huge things done in the way now we know where we're going we know how to do it now what we need to do it and we some some men, some some even said in the in, in, uh, like we need the chief to make uh, the head of state to make a lot of time to, to they, they forget the political aspect of their position sometimes they cannot be deeper in such kind of a, a subject but how we can push yeah. the implement the, the different stakeholders for example yeah. in the in an in entire administration to be aware of what is what's supposed to be done yeah. it's uh, interesting be you say that, that because part of what I said at the conference especially when it comes to the issue of implementation and and dissemination was that some of the head of states may actually not understand uh, what was agreed at these forums and 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 maybe uh, require remobilization even if, even though they were there in the meeting that signed the report they still to be remotivated and this is where now women and youth right as powerful uh, stakeholders right can can push uh, for implementation of these things because otherwise 
uh, just nothing will, will, will happen. Yeah, that's why I say, I, I told you uh, earlier, like uh, the strategy and the methodology is the most important part of the work we're doing. Because yeah. a long time people thought like the president can make this happen or cannot make this happen. Yeah. What we, we forget, like the president is a, is a human being. It's not a supernatural. Yeah. He's, he's a human being. Like when you take the agenda of the president, I'm not, it's not an excuse like president should not be yeah. doing this because they have a political position. Whatever, some may be more technical and some may be more political. So what, that, that's the accountability part. We, we try to make it happen about individual as a civil servant in, in the administration. I think I hold a different view. Okay. I think I hold a different view. I think a head of state yeah. is a leader. Yeah. And that's why at this point we cannot accept mediocrity as leadership yeah. or masked as leadership. I think, I think when it comes to issues of women, I will take a leave from the gender summit that happened in Kigali. Yeah. We sat through an opening session where there was President Kagame, there was President of the African Development Bank and various other prominent people. But I sat there and I was convinced that these people have bought in into the gender discourse. Yeah. There was no, no, I'm too busy, so therefore I cannot attend to this. No, you, they, were, they were convinced. Nobody yeah. can tell them anything. And it's not just them paying lip service, but when they actually speak about the things that they are doing in their country and in the development bank and wherever and various other platforms, you can tell that it's something they've bought into and they are doing something about it. So yeah. equally with other issues that are important, they can do the same. Yeah. So all we need is just really buy-in and really leadership instead of mediocrity. And I'll, yeah. I'll leave it there. Yeah, uh, I, I, it's like the same part of that. When I say it's not defined like excuses for them, yeah. because we may have, for example, when you take the case of, uh, of Mali, for example, you may have the, the president is, you have individuals in the, in, in the process who is yeah. like uh, working with honesty and doing, yeah. but the highest level is like corrupt. Okay. So whatever happens, the president, you cannot follow the president because he's corrupt. Yeah. The, 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 the entire country will be corrupt. But if they can show the political envy, the political uh, will, yeah. will to make this happen. But if the stakeholders, the ones who will implement, administration is a huge process. The yeah. ones who will implement these technical materials, like in the level where people really need it, right. doesn't exist. Oh. So that means the, the political will will yeah definitely be limited. We're going to have to leave it there. But uh, your, your last word, do you feel optimistic about the continent? I mean, if you look at this report, the discussions that have happened since it was launched, the discussions here... At the, at the Fortunately for me, my view of or optimism about the continent is not anchored on one report, but generally over looking at all the work and all the yeah. efforts and initiatives that are there, yeah. I really feel I feel confident. Okay. There's a lot of work to be done, but I'm saying I'm here to do the work as well. All right. Moza? Yeah, definitely. I'm, uh, I can say I'm more than optimistic because yeah. I don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. And we're optimistic we, because you don't have a choice. We have to make it happen. We must make it happen. We're, yes. we're, we're prisoners of hope. All right. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. And I wish you well in what you're doing. And uh, keep up the, the good work. And uh, let's, let's, let's build this continent. As you're saying, we don't have a choice. This is our home. And we have to make it work. But thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for having us. All right. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Uh, Luanda and Musa, the on fire about issues of the continent, but they remain optimistic about the future of this continent. But until we talk frankly again, may God bless you.